Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. So time for the easy button. And you'll probably ask me, why did I put this at the end of the course, or near the end of the course? But we're going to look at AutoML, which is Automated Machine Learning. For the latest on my AI course and projects, click subscribe and the bell next to it to be notified of every new video. Now we're going to look at AutoML. So as a data scientist, I very frequently get asked by people of various professions, aren't you just trying to automate me out of a job? Are you trying to replace my job with artificial intelligence? And in reality, the answer is often no. We're trying to give them better augmented tools to help them do their jobs better. But if I were to say, yes, I'm trying to automate you out of a job, well, if it makes you feel any better, data scientists are trying to automate ourselves out of a job just as fast as anybody else. And this is what AutoML is. I give you all of these hyperparameters and other things that you need to do to tune your model so that they get the best possible performance. I give you all these data types and you have to use dummy variables and other encodings to get that data into a form that the neural network can deal with. AutoML does this all just boom. You give it you give it some data and it figures out how it wants to encode everything. It figures out what type of neural network it wants and it goes from there. It's largely using machine learning to build machine learning. It's not the most complicated thing in the world. It's brute force often, but there's a lot of commercial products that are extremely expensive. You can get high-end sports cars for what these things cost per year, per user. So I'll talk about a few of those on the commercial side, and we will also see how to implement a very simple AutoML that I have just in this module. It's something that I created. It's part of what I have in my Kaggle Utilities. It's a more simplified version that you'll see here, but it can take raw data and try to figure out what it's going to do. So as far as AutoML, there's RapidMiner, there's Dataku, there's DataRobot, there's H2O Driverless. I have honestly worked with and evaluated really all of these. I will give you my opinion of these in 2019. This changes rapidly. AutoML is huge. There's tons of companies, startups that want to get into this. Everything from a couple guys in a garage forming a startup to fairly large second and third round startups. That are that are doing these kind of things. Rapid Miner is one of the older ones. It's been there a long, long time, longer, I believe, than all three of these others. Rapid Miner. I'm going to actually show you the free version of it in a moment. It is. It's not my favorite, but it's it's there, and you can get a free version of it. So you might want to you might want to look at that if you're interested in some auto machine learning. Dataku is a platform that has auto machine learning as part of it, so you can go very. They call it low code, no code. So you're not doing a lot of coding. Citizen data scientists. So these are people who are not terribly technical, but still want to do data sciencey sort of things. Dataku is very good for them. It. Dataku really, really tries to be just about everything. And I think that's perhaps one of their downfalls is they attempt to be auto machine learning, but not the best auto machine learning. They attempt to be data pre-processing, but not the best data pre-processing. So there's lots of companies that specialize in all the parts that Dataku does. Data Robot, in my opinion, was really one of the pioneers of AutoML, and they were founded by Kaggle Masters back when you didn't have a Kaggle Grandmaster. Many of them are now Grandmasters. And they founded their company on their Kaggle winnings. How cool is that? So I'm very fond of these last two, really. Data Robot and H2O Driverless. I feel those are the two best technology solutions out there for AutoML. They're both very expensive, relatively speaking. For an individual, they're quite expensive. For a Fortune 500, maybe not so bad. But these are all commercial, closed source, products. Then there's also the cloud solution from Google. There's AutoML. Let me show you just kind of what one of these looks like. So we'll do Rapid Miner. The reason that I'm picking Rapid Miner is not because I'm particularly fond of it. It's okay, but they have a free version and I'm going to launch it. Rapid Miner is pretty expensive itself if you pay for the... Interesting. Speaking of which, your Rapid Miner Studio Education license will expire in 65 days. Should I renew my license? So yeah, look how much this costs. 
Rapid Miner Studio, which I think is their pretty simple one, 5 to 10K per user per year. Rapid Miner Server on premise, 36K a year, 36K. These are not inexpensive programs. And there's a chat bot that'll talk to you about spending big bucks if you want to talk to the chat bot. So let me say remind me later. And what we're going to do with this one is we're going to click this one, Auto Model. So we're going to choose to Auto Model. And I need to get my data actually uploaded. So I'll do this in the local repository. I'll import new data. The data's on my computer. Downloads. We'll use my sample data set. Same one we'll use in another example. These are all of the data. We're going to let the data be in the format that we're expecting. We're going to try to predict the product. So we'll do a classification. And here you choose the, oh, it just wants to know different formats. So that's fine. We import the data. We want to predict. We want to predict the product. It shows you the distribution. We'll click next. It suggests not using ID. It's pretty smart. Yeah, ID is not that useful. We're going to use, let it use all these different machine learning model types. We'll run it. And essentially, it is brute forcing the heck out of this right now. It is trying to find the best models and the best encodings for that data to let you know what it sees. You can see the accuracy percentage here. It's it's decent. It's getting around 70% accuracy. I always run this program on a subset of the current semester's Kaggle competition, just so that I can see if the current data set is even remotely predictive. Meaning, can the inputs, do they have any chance of predicting the target? All right, and it's done. You can see the different models. It looks like the best accuracy was achieved by deep learning. Yay, deep learning. So it also shows you the runtime. Some of these took more time to train. So often you want to balance these two in terms of compute complexity versus others. Now, once you have it, you can go into the deep learning model. You can look at the model. This shows you the stats on how it created it, the hyperparameters. This is pretty cool. You can go into the simulator and it tells you the correlations here. So income uh, is pretty negatively correlated with predicting product B. So you can you can look at these and really get a, some explanation on the data. So this is a commercial AutoML package. Now we'll look at how to create a simple one of these in Python. So this is my simple AutoML system. I give you a pretty simple class here. I rather like this class. I wrote it. It basically allows you to abstract the difference between a CSV file coming from the web or locally. So I will run that just so that it's defined because we'll need that. Because this all works, this auto ML that I'm giving you, at least the analysis, it all works by streaming. So even if the data is very, very big, it will be able to handle lots of records and do the required calculations. These are some of the configuration items that you can give it. Most of these you can simply leave as is. So I will run this just to get the auto ML system into here. This code generates a neural network based on the sizes that you give it. So it'll create either a classification or a regression one. And this one helps cross validate in the neural network. This is all the same code that we saw earlier in this course where we're setting up classification. So notice if you're classifying, it does do argmax to turn the dummy variables for your output into an actual index because that's what you need to evaluate it. And we also make sure that we evaluate in accuracy if we're classifying RMSE if we're not. And we just build the out of samples and report the final accuracy as well. We'll go ahead and run this so that it's loaded. I give you several different data sets here that you can run the auto ML on. Some are classification, some are regression. You honestly don't have to think about it that much other than specifying it here. So I'm going to run it on that same simple data set that I had, and it's going to run it as classify. And it's going to attempt to do auto machine learning just like Rapid Miner was doing. So this first part that I do, it analyzes the data set and it creates a file called control.csv. And I will show you control CSV because it's important. So this is control CSV. It gives you essentially, so ID, it is suggesting that we Z score the ID. It wasn't quite smart enough to figure out that there was too many unique values. I'm going to change ID to ignore. So we don't want to do anything with the ID. The job, it decided to make it a categorical, and that's fine. It shows you the distribution of the various categories here. Area is also going to be a categorical. Income and aspect, it is choosing to Z-score those, and that is fine. 
Subscriptions is also dummy categorical. Z-score, Z-score, those are fine, those are fine. Age, interestingly, it is choosing to dummy cat it. It's just because there weren't that many ages. It thought it was a category. Let's Z-score that. I think that's a better decision. Population density is definitely a Z-score. And then the final output product, it is going to consider those as categories. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it so that we now have our modified version of the control file. And this next part, it basically just reloads the control file and it transforms the input data according to the control file. So we'll go ahead and run that. It is pretty quick. It just processes over and it transforms and gives output to transform.csv. Let's have a quick look at that. So look at this file. This is kind of a mess. I mean, see job got swapped out to all these dummy variables. You've got all kinds of dummy variables. You've got some z-scores. But isn't this cool? This is your feature vector that you would have normally fought with and tried to create yourself on your own. The auto ML that I wrote is basically just figuring that all out for you. And now we're going to actually try to fit it to a, we're going to pre-process it so that we get it into X and Y. And it does that. I check to make sure there's no missing variables. There are not. And we're going to cross-validate it. It's going to go through all five folds and train it and validate it and we'll get an idea of what the neural network that this would be able to produce actually has in terms of accuracy. Notice the first fold it's not that far behind rapid miner and my version is free. Fold 2 is right around 70 so we're just a few accuracy points below rapid miner. And the final accuracy is a little below 70. So it's it's close. It's a few points below rapid miner, but it's also free. And unlike the free version of rapid miner, you can use as many rows as you want to on this with it within reason. You still have to be able to train the neural network in memory. This content changes often, so subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on this course and other topics in artificial intelligence.